Confused about concentrations? Here's a cheat sheet, with some chemical context, of course, because, well, I am the bumbling biochemist after all. So I'll talk about what is what, um, when to use which, and some practical tips so that you make your solutions correctly. So there are a number of different ways to report concentration, and the one that you're going to see the most often in biochemistry is molarity, um, which you represent with this capital M, and it tells you the moles of solute per liter of solution. Um, so a mole is just six times 10 to the 23rd copies. Um, and so when you have a one molar solution, you have six times 10 to the 23rd copies of that molecule or whatever it is per liter of solution. Um, this is your liters of solution, not your liters of solvent. So when you're making a solution, you need to um, leave room for that solvent uh, or that solute, I mean, because when you're stuffing a bunch of stuff in there, it's going to take up space. And so you need to account for this dissolve your solids in a smaller amount initially and then adjust the volume. And when you're making liquids, you want to um, add the solvent to the fill line and not just calculate how much of the solvent you need. Um, as we saw yesterday with the set making 70% ethanol, for example, when you mix ethanol and water, you get a smaller volume than their combined volumes because the ethanol can kind of sneak into some of the water networks. Okay, so that is molarity, mole solute per liter of solution, and you can calculate moles based on the weight using the um, formula weight or the molecular weight, um, which is telling you the number of grams per mole, and you can find that on the bottles of your solids or on Google. Okay, what about molality? An L, this is a smaller N, lowercase m. You don't see this that often in biochemistry, but sometimes you do. Um, it's useful when you are dealing with drastically changing temperatures. You might have when the volume is changing because, for example, when you heat up water, the water expands as you've ever figured out, potentially the hard way. Um, if you have some sort of solution in a bottle and then it gets hot and then your bottle like it's all like bloated and deformed. So basically, the volume can change with the temperature, but the mass doesn't change with the temperature. There's a whole like conservation of mass thing. There's not a conservation of volume. And so similarly to how when we mix solutions together, we can change the volume, which is one of the reasons why the, if the molality wouldn't change, um, but they could affect the molarity. But when you have the molality, you're dealing with kilograms, the mass is not going to change. Um, and so the mass isn't going to change with the temperature, it's not going to change if the molecules are interacting with one another. And so this molality is going to be like a more stable thing. Thankfully for us, the, um, the molality and the molarity uh, of water at room temperature is both about like one. Um, and so we don't really need to worry about it. Um, or not one, sorry, it's water's density is one and the molar mass basically. There's no difference between the molarity and the molality of water at room temperature. And so we don't have to worry about it. But if you are drastically changing your temperature, then this could change. Um, if your things are interacting with one another and changing the volume, um, that would also change the molarity. And so molality is going to be constant throughout those changes. Um, but we don't really typically use it that much in biochemistry, I would have to say, but in some chemistry applications, you might come across that more frequently. Okay, mole fraction. So this is going to be the moles of one component compared to the total moles. And so the mole fraction, you might think, okay, well, isn't that just like molarity? Except that here we are dealing with um, the components are going to, the mole fraction will be influenced by what else you put in there. So with the molarity, if you add more stuff in there, the molarity isn't going to change as long as the volume stays constant. But the mole fraction, so the proportion of all of the moles that are that, like all of the copies of things, the more, the, when you add something else in there, well, now you're going to decrease the mole fraction of that original thing, even though you're not changing the amount of that original thing, you're not changing the molarity of that original thing, but you are changing the mole fraction of that original thing. Um, so that is um, mole fraction. Mole fraction, if you have a gas and you multiply the mole fraction by the total pressure, you get the partial pressure. And partial pressure is often used to report the concentration of gases. 
Um, it tells you the amount of pressure contributed by a component of a gas. And um, Dalton's law of partial pressures tells us that the partial pressure of all of the different components, basically they're additive. So if you take the pressure of one component plus the pressure of the other component plus the pressure of the other component, you get the total pressure. And the ideal gas law tells us that that pressure is going of each component is going to be directly related to the number of molecules of that of that gas. So basically, no matter what gas it is, because gas molecules are so spread apart, we can kind of this ideal gas law. When you have like an ideal gas, you can think of these as kind of being interchangeable. They're not really interacting with one another. They're so tiny that we don't really care about the any slight differences. Um, and so the number of, these, of those molecules is all you care about. And when we're talking about numbers of molecules, we're talking about like that mole stuff. And so if we have the mole fraction, which tells you the like the portion, proportion of the moles, um, the total moles that are of that thing, and then we know the total pressure, then the partial pressure is going to be the component that's contributed by that one thing. And you'll often see um, gas concentrations reported in terms of the partial pressure. Um, so you might see this when you're thinking about the mole fraction of the air that we breathe, um, and then we could talk about that as convert that into partial pressure. So if you have like a one atmosphere of partial pressures, you can convert, say, okay, about 78% of the air, so about 0.78 mole fraction is going to be nitrogen. And if we're at a one atmosphere of partial pressure, well, that's going to be one times 0.78, which is going to be 0.78 atmospheres contributed by that nitrogen. So if we were to take away that nitrogen, um, we would have that much less in the total pressure. Um, and yeah, so that's basically where you might see partial pressure. Um, so now we have some percentages. Um, so these are going to be the proportion, though, like the weight or the volume of your solute divided by the weight or the volume of your solution. So you'll see, if you see like percent WW, that's weight, weight percentage. So it's going to be the weight of your solute as divided by the weight of the solution. So this can be grams, this can be kilograms, this can be milligrams, but they have to be consistent between the two. Um, because the units are going to cancel out. This is just a percentage. Um, so as long as these can, they're consistent, if you have like mid, zinc, um, and kilograms, then you're going to need to do some unit conversion. You can easily convert between those units just by multiplying by 1,000 or whatever. Um, and so you divide those, multiply by 100%, and you get the weight, weight percentage. Volume, volume percentage, same sort of thing, except here we're dealing with volume of solute divided by volume of your solution um, times 100%. If you take these fractions and instead of multiplying them by 100%, you multiply them by a million, you get parts per million. And if you multiply them by a billion, you get parts per billion. Um, and so one, one part per million works out to be one milligram per kilogram um, or one milligram per liter for weight, weight and volume, volume respectively. Um, so if you don't believe me, um, you can do the math yourself. So if we have um, basically, if we're going from grams, so you think of grams over grams, and then you divide one of those by, you divide the solute by a thousand to get milligrams, and then you multiply the, the solution um, weight times a thousand to get kilograms. Well, now that's a thousand times a thousand, a million. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's parts per million and parts per billion. That's good for reporting amounts of super, super, duper dilute things like contaminants. Um, don't see that that often in biochemistry, but you'll see that in a lot of like earth science and things like that. Okay, weight volume percentage. So percentage in quotes because this isn't a real percentage because your units are not canceling out. You have grams of solute per mils of solution times 100%. I find it easier to think of it as grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solution. Um, so 1% solution is going to be one gram per 100 milliliters. Um, so you might be wondering why. Well, this basically, it has to do with the most of the solutions that we're dealing with are these aqueous, dilute aqueous solutions. So a little bit of stuff in a lot of water. And because the density of water is about um, one gram per mil at room temp, going back to that whole like molality conversation, because there's when you have a dilute solution, whatever you put in there is just gonna be like a little drop in the bucket and you don't have to really think about it that much in terms of the change in the density. And so if the density is not changing, 
then 1%, um, then one gram per mil is about 100% weight volume. Um, the dense, and so, yeah, so that's where this might come into play. You might see this in medicine, such as like normal saline percentages and things like this, but it only holds true if you have a really dilute solution and a, an aqueous solution. So if you don't, um, then this is not going to hold true. And you can get into some weird things where you're trying to stuff a bunch of sucrose into a solution and you're realizing that your solution would be like 200% or something crazy. Um, so um, only works for dilute solutions. Okay, and then finally we have relative concentrations of stock solutions. So I did a lot more on this in the post the other day, um, but basically this is when you see things like 10X, 5X, um, 2X, basically this is telling you how much more concentrated your thing is than you want to use it at. So we call the concentration where you're using it at like the working concentration. And so if you have a 1x solution, that's going to be at your working concentration. If you have a 10x solution, you're going to be 10 times more concentrated than what you want. And so this is going to, um, you're going to be diluting it one to 10 in your final solution. And if you want to know more about how to do calculations like that, you can um, look at that more recent post, that recent post. Okay, so just to review, molarity, moles per sol of solute per liter of solution. Remember, this is solution. This is not your um, moles of solvent. Um, so solution, solution, solution. Take into account the volume that's contributed by the solute. From a practical standpoint, um, if you're dealing with a really, really dilute solution where you're just adding a little bit of solute to a lot, a lot of liquid, you don't really need to worry about um, doing things exactly this way and you can just measure out the liquid um, and add the solute to it. Also, if you're dealing with a really tiny volume, I mean, I don't think that they make graduated cylinders that are like 50 microliters, but that'd be really, really cool. Um, but in that case, just, you don't need to worry about it and you just calculate out the components and add them together. Um, but note that the final volume might be a little less or a little more than you expected and don't freak out um, and make more than you would think that you would need. Um, this is what you're gonna see most commonly in biochemistry and you can convert between the, um, the mass or the weight. So weight technically takes into account gravity, but we typically use those terms mass and weight interchangeably. Um, so you'll see like molecular weight, molecular mass, um, things like that. Um, also formula weight and formula mass um, and formula weight versus molecular weight. Basically we use those terms interchangeably, but technically um, a molecule is something that's covalently held together. And so if you have something like a salt, some sort of electrolyte that's actually going to dissociate when you dissolve it, like sodium chloride, um, that would, that's held together by ionic bonds. That's not technically a molecule. And so technically it would have a formula weight as opposed to a molecular weight, but you typically see it written as molecular weight. So that was just a side note. So molarity, moles per liter of solution. Molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Um, so not your total solution, but your solvent. This is good when you're changing the temperature, um, which would change the volume or when the the components that you're adding together are going to interact and therefore could change the volume. So the volume is not conserved, but the mass is. And so the molality is going to be conserved under different conditions. Mole fraction, this is just like the proportion of your solution that is one component. Um, we represent it with this Greek letter chi and it's moles of something divided by total mole. Um, a thing to note about mole fraction is that if you add the um, another solute, you're going to decrease the mole fraction, even though the molarity is staying constant. Partial pressure, this is the mole fraction times the total pressure. It works out for gases, and it's most basically, yeah, you'll see it used sometimes to report gas concentrations. Um, okay, you have percentages, you have weight, weight percentage, um, weight the solute divided by weight of solution times 100%, volume, volume percentage, volume of solute divided by volume solution times 100%. You can also report those for really, really, really dilute things as like parts per million or parts per billion. One part per million is going to be one milligram per kilogram or one milligram per liter, depending on which of these you're using. Um, and then we have this fake percentage, weight, volume percentage. 1% um, is one gram per 100 mils. Um, this works out for dilute aqueous solutions, um, but it's not, not other things.
And then you have the relative concentrations of your stock solutions, where you see some sort of like X factor where that thing is going to be. Um, that number before the X is telling you how much more concentrated it is than you want to use it at. So I hope that this helps and I will share the sheet. And yeah, but remember why you're using what and what comes into play when and happy calculating.